it looks like I'm going to be starting a series for medical students, residents, and other medical trainees about things that you feel like you should know by now and you're expected to manage on rounds, but nobody ever taught it to you. I'm Dr. Nikki. I'm a board certified pediatrician, and today we're going to be talking about IV fluids. This video is going to focus on what type of IV fluids you're going to be using in an average pediatric patient and how to calculate your maintenance IV fluid rates in kids because you know that we can't make things simple in pediatrics and everything's going to be weight based. First, let me just reiterate that this is for the average pediatric patient. There's always going to be exceptions based on the patient, based on if they have any underlying medical conditions or the specific acute illness that they're presenting with. But on average, for probably 95% or more of your patients, these are the IV fluids that you're going to be using. And the way that you're going to calculate your maintenance rate is going to be the same always, regardless of who the patient is. Okay, so let's begin. So for most pediatric patients, you're going to want to use an isotonic solution, such as normal saline or lactated ringer. Back in the day, they used to use a lot more hypotonic solutions, but there has definitely been a shift away from that. And this is consistent with the clinical practice guidelines published by the AAP. And the reason for this is because there was an increased risk of hyponatremia in patients who were receiving hypotonic solution. This is because sick kids and kids who are hospitalized are already at an increased risk of SIADH, and so giving them hypotonic fluids is basically going to cause iatrogenic hyponatremia, even more so if they're already at risk. Okay, so number one, isotonic fluids. You're also going to be adding dextrose into the fluids. Typically, you're going to be using 5% dextrose. This is to provide sufficient glucose to prevent hypoglycemia. Oftentimes, you're giving children IV fluid hydration because they're not taking PO or they're vomiting or having diarrhea. So adding dextrose into the fluids is going to help you prevent hypoglycemia. Next, in children with normal serum potassium levels and normal kidney function, so this is majority of your kids, you're going to be adding potassium chloride. Generally, we add 20 milliequivalents per liter of potassium chloride, but sometimes in your younger kids and kids who weigh under 10 kilograms, you may lower this to 10 milliequivalents per liter. So for the average pediatric patient, your fluid order is going to be D5, normal saline, with 20 milliequivalents of KCL. Again, this is to prevent hypoglycemia and to ensure normal electrolyte balance in the blood. Now, how do we calculate maintenance fluids? It's really simple, I promise. It just takes a little bit of calculation. Okay, so first I'm gonna give you the general explanation of how to calculate hourly maintenance fluid rates, and then we'll go over some examples. So remember, everything in pediatrics is weight-based. So for the first 10 kilograms of the patient's weight, you're gonna multiply by four. For the next 10 kilograms of the patient's weight, you're gonna multiply by two. And every one kilogram after that, you're gonna multiply by one. So let me show you what this looks like. If you have a seven kilogram patient, that falls within the first 10 kilograms. So you're just gonna do seven times four, which equals 28. So your hourly fluid rate for that patient is 28 milliliters per hour. So when you place your order, you're gonna order D5 normal saline with 20 of KCL at a rate of 28 milliliters per hour. If your patient is 15 kilograms, your first 10 kilograms you're gonna multiply by four, and your next five kilograms is gonna be multiplied by two. Because remember, anything within the second 10 kilograms is multiplied by two. So you only have five kilograms, right? Because you have that 15 kilogram patient, the first 10 was multiplied by four, the next five kilograms is gonna be multiplied by two. So 10 times four is 40, five times two is 10, and then you add those together. So the 40 plus 10, equals 50 mLs an hour. If you have a 27 kilogram patient, you're gonna multiply the first 10 kilograms by four, which is 40. You're gonna multiply the next 10 kilograms by two, which is 20. And then you have seven kilograms left. Remember, after the first 10 kilograms times four, the second 10 kilograms times two, any one kilogram after that, you just multiply by one. So you have seven kilograms left, so seven times one is seven. And now you add all of that together. 40 plus 20 plus seven, so that's 67 mLs an hour. Any child over 20 kilograms ends up being a very simple calculation because the first 20 kilograms is always gonna be equivalent to 60 mLs an hour, right? Because the first 10 kilograms times four is 40, the next 10 kilograms times two is 20. So that gives you 60 mLs an hour. And then anything after that, you just add that amount additional to that 60 mLs an hour because it's one times that number. So if you have a 45 kilogram patient, remember the first 20 kilograms of that is equal to 60 mLs an hour, and then all you have left over is 25. So 25 times one is 25. So 60 plus 25 is 85 mLs an hour. That's all there is to it. I hope this was helpful. Let me know what other topics you feel like you should know by now, but were never taught to you and you're expected to manage on rounds. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel because most of my long form educational videos are gonna be over there. 
I'm just sort of testing the waters here. It seems like a lot of people were interested in my last video and found it really helpful. There's a lot of stuff that you don't learn in didactics that seems to just kind of come out of nowhere when you get to rounds. So my goal is to get you prepared as much as possible. Happy rounding, everyone.